Hello and welcome to the third part of our series on how to set up a VPS for our applications and site projects. In this part, we will connect the domain to the application that we hosted in the last video. To connect our application or our server to a domain, we first need to get a domain. And as the server, we will use Hostinger for that. You can use whatever domain provider you want. If you want to support me a bit, in the uh, description below, there is a link to Hostinger. So I first enter the domain name that I want. I already looked for one. And I will choose pgmt.xyz. Um, and yeah, then add it to the card. Again, choose a plan that I want. I want it for one year. And then log in and pay with PayPal or whatever. I will again see you when I purchase the domain. After you finish the registration, so entered some of your personal details, you will come to this screen. You're almost there. Um, after that, you will get an email and you have to verify that I already own a domain at Hostinger. So for me, it's already verified automatically. So now the important steps are that we need to set up an A record for our server. Um, remember the domain of our server is this one we can simply create an a record by going to dns name server setting under dns record select type a leave the add add means that we are not using a subdomain but the domain itself so pgmt.xyz we could also use something like sub then it would be sub.pgmt.xyz, but we don't want that. Then where does it point to? That is the uh, you, uh, IP of our server. And this is the time to live. Usually it's set to something like 3600, but it's not really important. Now we add the record. And last time we hosted our application here. If the A record is already updated, we should now be able to reach it under pgmt.xyz. Um, it is not updated yet, so I will come back when it is done. After some waiting, our domain finally points to our server. And as we can see here, we uh, reach the same as application as if we would try to access it through our IP. That means our container is currently freely accessible from the web and we don't want that. We want to protect our container with a reverse proxy. A reverse proxy is basically a gatekeeper and every request to our server should go through that reverse proxy. The reverse proxy then redirects the request to the correct container, in our case, this application. In the next video, we will then set up this reverse proxy. For that, I will give you three different proxies that you can choose. The first one is Nginx proxy. It's a really simple tool that um, automatically configures reverse proxy for you by only setting two environment variables on your containers. So that's really cool and really good for simple applications. As soon as you need to configure something a bit more customized, it's a bit harder. For that, we have the second option, Caddy. It's really simple, really powerful, but you have to configure it manually. But 
Don't worry, the configuration is pretty simple. And the last one, traffic, is a bit more complex, but much more powerful. It, for example, allows you to run multiple containers and it places a load balancer in front of it. So it's a bit more cloud native like. Uh, if you're starting out, I would probably suggest you to go either with Nginx proxy or with Caddy. My favorite would be Caddy if I would start out now again, but I personally am using Nginx proxy, so it's totally fine as well. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.